free to do. <laughs> Not putting anybody in the spot. No. I'm Jerry. It's my wife, Cindy, along with us. And we're living in Pratt right now. We're living in St. John's. So, uh, how do we get out here? <laughs> they are our longtime friends. And uh, they, their daughter and Emma have been best friends since. Oh, well, that's me. Well, you found the right place. Okay. <laughs> They're pretty much half responsible for how I turned out. <laughs> well, you turned out good. <laughs> so they're half good at least. Right? Hey, hey. Okay. Any, uh, any joys, cares, or concerns? I enjoy. You know, yes. I've been seeing the um, cardiologist. Thank <laughs> you. 
coming back home. <laughs> But it's nice to be back with, with the family. And once again, I thank you all for having us, including us as part of your family. you are very gracious to us. Uh, what I'd like to do is, uh, if I get a chair, we want to, uh, if you can come up. Uh, I need a chair. You can sit in the middle. Just Emma's last week with us, she were leaving. So she gets on the plane to Ecuador this next weekend, so she's going to be gone for six months. Oh. So we, we'd like to lay hands on her and, uh, and sit. I know it's a little bit shy. It's the one that's the first one I've found. Right. If you could all come up, just lay your hands.
into the likeness of Christ, touch us and renew us in this hour as we move from sinfulness unto perfection. Eternal God, we ask a blessing on this congregation. We ask a blessing on all our families, Lord. We ask that you bless each and every one of us. Bless each and every one of our families. Bless those who are traveling, Lord. Bless them as they go from here to there and they come back from there to here. Be with them all the way. Take care of the cars and the trains and the planes. And whatever vehicles they're traveling, keep them safe and bring them back to us safely. Lord, we ask a blessing on this community. We ask a blessing on our state, our nation, and all the nations of the world. Bless each and every leader that they may lead, knowing that Jesus Christ is Lord. Bless our soldiers and sailors, all those who protect us around the world and here at home. Be with all those who are in nursing homes, all those who are at home sick. Send your Holy Spirit to bless each and every one. Comfort those who have lost loved ones. And be with us now and forever. Send us out into the world to do your will, as we ask in Jesus' name, who taught us how to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For by us the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please, uh, amen and amen again. Just turn with me to hymn number 378. Amazing grace. Hymn 378.
you to pray. And uh, we know you keep her in prayer, and we will too. It says, through many dangers, toils, and snares, we have already come. So we will face dangers, toils, and snares, but we know that the Lord will be with her. Uh, please turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Colossians, uh, which if we use the Pew Bible, the book of Colossians, is found on page 191 of the back, 190 and 1 of the back, Colossians 1, 15 through 28. This is a powerful argument for the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Colossians 1, page 190, right the back of the Pew Bible. Verse one, uh, chapter 1, verses 15 through 28. Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things were created in heaven and on earth. Visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or authorities, all things were created through Jesus and for Jesus. He is before all things, and in Him all things go together. He is the head of the body, the church. Jesus is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. That is everything He might be preeminent. For in Him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. And you who once were estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death, in order to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which has been preached to every creature on the heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I complete what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church, of which I became a minister according to the divine office which was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known, the mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now made manifest to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we proclaim, warning every person and teaching every person in all wisdom, that we may present every person mature in Jesus Christ. Uh, please turn with me to the Gospel of Luke. Luke uh, chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42, page 71, the back of the Pew Bible. Listen to the word of God. Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village. And a woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving him. She went to him and said, Lord, do you not care? that my sister has left me to serve alone. Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you're anxious and troubled about many things. One thing is needful. Mary has chosen the good portion which shall not be taken away from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, this morning I want to direct your attention to that passage we just read and ask you, are you a Mary or a Martha? 
And having asked you that, I want to give you some lessons from sisters. Lessons from sisters. All well, sisters have a unique bond, a special relationship. They can be best friends. They can even share each other's troubles and share each other's clothing, and hats and handbags. And they can really love each other and they can be supportive of each other during the ups and downs of the other sister. They can even pray for a sister who's away. We were blessed yesterday. Uh, we had two sisters who would normally be here, but uh, they were at their brother's wedding. And uh, they were the ushers, and they were so beautiful, so graceful. Uh, they were all grown up yesterday. Uh, they, they just look absolutely marvelous from our children. Well, I don't know if you know this, but the first Sunday in August is called National Sisters Day. The first Sunday in August, National Sisters Day. And what it aims to do is to recognize and celebrate the special blessings that sisters bring to each and every one of us who has a sister or sister. However, sometimes sisters can be really rivals. Sisters can uh, fight for attention. And two sisters in particular, Epi Leatherman, I don't know if you've heard of her, and the other sister is Pauline Phillips. One you know them as uh, Ann Landers and uh, Abby, dear Abby. And these two sisters, they were fighting rivals, great rivals over who would be America's number one advice columnist, Dear Abby and uh, Ann Landers. Well, in 1954, the other Irving, Irving Berlin, uh, wrote White Christmas. And he had Rosemary Clooney and uh, Trudy Stevens singing Sisters. Those of you who are as dated as I am, you might remember, there were never two more devoted sisters who cared and shared every little thing. In all kinds of weather, they stuck together. And you know the part, Lord, help the mister who comes between me and my sister. Lord, help the sister who comes between me and my friend. Well, some 2,000 years ago, a mister did come between two sisters. Turns out that the mister happened to be none other than the Lord himself. So I don't know if when Irving Burton wrote this stuff, he was reading the story of Mary and Martha. But we see two sisters, and I could just imagine the parents of Mary and Martha uh, leaving the home with Martha, the older one, and she had, she was in charge, she had to take care of little sister Mary, and she had to take care of little brother Lazarus. And of course, given that, being given that responsibility, she naturally developed a works mentality that focused on a task-oriented personality. You know, she knew that Jesus was coming, and or she was expecting Jesus to come at any time, and, and he did come, and she would want to pick up the place, and of course, Lazarus would drop his socks on the way into the bedroom. She'd rush and pick that up and make sure the place was tidy, and he'd want to have the food on the table. So the rabbi dropped in, and maybe he dropped in with his disciples, maybe he dropped in alone, I think, uh, from what we've read, uh, they've only spoken about Jesus. So maybe he dropped in alone. But whatever she was kept so busy. Making sure that things were in place, things were in order. Now Mary, on the other hand, the younger sister, was, she was a visionary. 
She was an idealist. She was a dreamer. She was. She had a philosophical personality, a philosophical outlook on life. And she was not caught up in the nitty gritty and the down to work little insignificant things and duties of the day. So when Jesus came to visit these two young ladies and their brother Lazarus, their differences were obvious and caused a little bit of friction. Just a little bit. But Jesus Christ, who knows us all, he knew their hearts, he knew their minds, he knew our he knows our hearts and our minds, he knows our thoughts. And, and what scares me a whole lot is that even our thoughts, even our very thoughts are captured on that digital recorder in heaven. And one day we're going to see Jesus, and of course he's going to say to us as we see Jesus Christ by faith, come on in and take your rest. Well done. But somehow he's going to replay all those thoughts and sins and all the bad things we've done and then he's going to take them and drop them as far as the east is from the west to the sea of forgetfulness. So Jesus Christ who's able to uh, know us and teach us and train us and guide us and be in us was there to teach these sisters some lessons. So I'm going to give you a couple of lessons. Lesson one is misunderstanding leads to missed need. Misunderstanding leads to missed need. And I'm going to read verse 40. I'm going to read it from my translation. But, Martha, verse 40, but Martha was distracted with all her preparation. And she came up to him, that's to Jesus, and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the serving alone? Then tell her to help me. Well, organized Martha, organized Martha had a hard time with an interruption in her schedule. She would normally be making a meal for herself, and Mary would help her, and the meal from Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. But here she had at least Jesus, perhaps his side. She saw Jesus arrive, she smiled, she welcomed him, offered him a seat, and then she rushed into the kitchen, you know, in front of the fire, and got the food, and suddenly she realized, wait a minute, where's my sister? Why isn't she helping you? So she misunderstood the needs of Jesus at that time. You see, Jesus was in Bethany, just three miles from the gates of Jerusalem. And he had fixed his gaze, and fixed his thoughts, his mind on Jerusalem and what would happen there. And he was in a hurry to teach them. He was just three miles from destiny. He was just three miles from going to the cross for Mary, Martha, Lazarus, you, and me, and the whole world. Time was running out. Now, food is always important. Of course, we, we, we have to eat to refresh ourselves. But at the same time, Jesus was there. He was there needing to teach you. He was there needing to train you. They're needed to commission the church, bless the church members and send them out to do what we saw today, a family going out and bringing another family in. So even though eating was important, he wanted Martha's attention, not her food. Let us give our friends, let us give our neighbors the attention they need. Let us empathize with them. Let us sympathize with them. Let us walk a mile in their moccasins. Let us understand what our neighbors really need rather than trying to do what we want to do for them. And let us look at our neighbors through the eyes of Jesus Christ. So lesson number one is misunderstanding leads to missed needs. 
Lesson number two. Don't miss the serendipity moment of learning. Let's look at verse 39. Don't miss the serendipity moments of learning. Verse 39. And she had a sister called Mary, who moreover was listening to the Lord's word, seated at his feet. Well, Martha stormed out of the kitchen. Lord, what's my sister doing? She's out there. She's just sitting down. She ain't doing nothing. She's just listening to you. She's just loafing. She's just no good. She's not helping in the situation. But what she was doing is she was gaining knowledge. She was gaining knowledge of Jesus Christ. She was gaining knowledge of the Lord. She was gaining the knowledge of God. She was gaining knowledge from the rabbi. It was a serendipity moment where she could sit at the feet of Jesus Christ and listen to the word, the living word. I ask you, how much time do you give to the word of God? When you get up in the morning, I know, you know, we got cows to milk, I know, we got a uh, part to put on the tractor, I know, we got to get out there and Get the uh, place mowed and get the uh, put the, the the rows in there and plow the fields and scatter the seeds. I know we're going to do all that, but do you set aside some time, just as Mary did, to be with the Lord? Do you set aside time to listen and to read the Word? And I ask now, Jesus, what would you have me to do today? What is my function today? How can I be of service to you? How can I be of service to God in God's world? What would Jesus do? Just spend a few minutes in the Word, reading the Word. Spend a few minutes on your knees if you're able to pray to God Almighty. So lesson number one is misunderstandings lead to misneeds. Lesson number two is um, don't miss the serendipity moments of learning. And I would sort of request that you do that every morning when you get up. Lord, you woke me up. You uh, gave me a good night's sleep. Or maybe sometimes you didn't give me a good night's sleep. But here I am at the start of a new day. Give me a new charge, a new commission to go out into the world. So lesson number three is don't miss the Jesus agenda for life. Don't miss the Jesus agenda for life. Verse 42 tells us, but only a few things are necessary, says Jesus. Really only one. For Mary has chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Mary decided to listen to Jesus Christ. Which is something we should all do. I wonder, are your social priorities keeping you from missing your attention to Jesus? His agenda for your life. What's his agenda? What, what does Jesus want you to achieve? Where does he want you to go? What does he want you to do? Uh, we're blessed that uh, we're, we have a representative who's prepared to go a thousand miles, two thousand miles to do what Jesus has asked her and us to do. Now you still have an opportunity to do exactly what she's doing. You can pray for her. You can pray that she will be saved. You can put some more money into the plate which will be given to Umcor, which will be used and right now it's being used in California with the fires and Oklahoma with the tornadoes and Haiti with uh, the, the, the people who are hungry and, and you're doing a great job with clothing for the, the little girls. And, uh, right now you're doing just a fantastic job. I'm so proud of this church. You're doing exactly what Jesus Christ has asked you to do. But I'm going to invite you to don't miss the Jesus agenda for your life. Focus on the Word. Focus on your families. Focus on those friends who are overseas, who are 
move missionaries to the others. Focus on your jobs. Focus on your community. Focus on the world community. Know that we are part of a global system, part of a global world. Know that Jesus Christ died for the sins of the whole world. I invite you to focus on your friends, focus on your faith. I invite you to focus on Jesus Christ. And just like these two sisters 2,000 years ago, I ask you, are you a Mary? Or are you a Martha? And what lessons can you learn from sisters? Amen. Let us now um, have a prayer of thanksgiving. Uh, if you live in your bulletin. <coughs> and you repeat that with me. <laughs> Loving God, you fill our lives with such abundant gifts that we are filled to overflowing our baskets of sun of the earth. From our gratitude to you and our love for our neighbors, we return now to the portion of these gifts. May these gifts honor you, and may those who receive them know the richness of your love. Amen.